Good morning, friends, and welcome to the online service of Concord United Methodist Church. It's Memorial Day weekend. This is a time when we honor and celebrate those who are serving and have served our country and protected our freedom here and around the world. Let's worship together. God's love, God's love is deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. God's love is deep within me, ever satisfying my soul. Please join in the responsive reading. Lord of the nations, on this day when we remember the struggles our country has gone through in its efforts to preserve our liberties, we thank you for having made our country great and our people free. Above all, we thank you for the blessings of religious liberty to preach the word of, to preach the word without hindrance and to worship you according to the faith we share. We pray that you will hold your gracious, protecting hand over us and over all the people of our country and all nations as we emerge from a worldwide pandemic. Guide those in authority and grant them wisdom so to rule that peace and prosperity and Good health may be ours according to your will. O oh God, we, we pray most of all that your gospel, which alone can make us truly free, may be preached in all its truth and purity throughout the entire world. Help us to use our freedom to the fullest extent so that we may hear from you, your people the good news of their salvation in Christ. Help us to know how manifold are your works. Bring to us and to all people that peace which passes all understanding and which is to be found in the faith that Jesus loves us and has redeemed us from all our sins. We ask it in his name, amen. Our first hymn this morning is This Is My Father's World. Let's raise our voices together. Why should my heart be sad? 
had. The Lord is King, let the heavens ring. God reigns, let the earth be glad. Let's review our mission and ministries this week. We have the rummage sale coming up in August 13th and 14th. That's Friday and Saturday. So please bookmark that, save that date, and we'll let you know when donations of different things can be brought into the church. So more information to come on the rummage sale. Our in-person services are only five weeks away. We'll resume on Sunday, July the 4th. We have our independence. There will be just one service at 10 a.m. in the sanctuary and then in fo on following Sundays in July and August. Masks and social distancing protocols will be observed. If you'd like to buy a shingle to help us pay off the cost of the new roof, we'd love to have help with that. Any donation is appreciated, five or $10. If you'd like to make a memorial gift, please consider adding roof to the memo line of the check and may God bless you for your consideration and contribution to that. We have lots of small groups happening in the church and they're all open to new members. And for more information, please contact the person listed for that particular group. We're having an evangelism, evangelism training session in July, July 18th. 5 to 6 30 p.m. in the evening. It's initiated by the Honeycomb Comas group, that's our 50s and 60s group, but all are invited to that training. We want to train together so we can do a better job reaching out to our community, inviting them into our church, and sharing with them our mission and ministries. As we did last summer, Pastor Lee has got a challenge for us, a Bible challenge to read the Bible during the long summer months. We've got four different tiers of Bible reading. You can start off at tier one, which is just reading the four gospels and the five first books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, Pentateuch. or you can go all the way up through tier two, three, and four. And tier four is a Bible master when you read the whole Bible during the summer. If you'd like to participate in that, I'm not sure if there are prizes yet, but we'll, we'll find out. And you can let Pastor Lee know if you would like to participate, please send him your name, the tier you would like to do, which one, and your email address so he can send you more information. Christ Care Men's Group continues. They meet the first and third Friday of the month. So they will be meeting this coming Friday, the 4th of June. They run at 10.30 to noon is the meeting time. And that group focuses on getting to know each other, reading the Bible, conducting mission outreach, raising up concerns and prayer, and also covering health, diet, and exercise. That group is led by Jim. If you want to call Jim to join, he is at 925-997-2257. On Sunday afternoons, Michelle hosts the Disciples Under Construction group. They meet via Zoom at 3 p.m. each Sunday. If you'd like to join that group, please contact Michelle at michelle at aseb.org. The Unshakable Hope group is the group of 30 and 40 year olds. They meet on Facebook Live. And if you'd like to join them, please go to the website concordumc.org and then just click on Facebook to join that group. The Unshakable Hope group had been having a meditation moment each week, which was led by Latou Pei, the, uh, uh, the trainee pastor in our church. He has now completed his assignment, but we're going to continue that meditation moment. If you'd like to read a Bible passage and meditate on it and send your thoughts in to Pastor Lee. And then that will be shared on our Facebook page so that all can hear and enjoy that. So if you'd like to do that, please send your meditation to Pastor Lee. We also want to see how everybody's doing and what everybody's up to as we get out and about more. So send us pictures of things you're in involved in, send them over to Sandy, and then we can see them on the Sunday service. 
We want to keep collecting prayer requests as you have them. Send them in if you would each week on Saturday, by Saturday morning, 9 a.m. to Pastor Lee so that we can include everybody's prayer requests in our service. It's now time for our children's moment and that's brought to us by Sandy. Hello children, this is Sandy. Do you know why I brought this flag today? It's to remind me that this weekend we celebrate a very special holiday. It's called Memorial Day. Memorial Day is a day on which we, we stop. We stop to remember and to honor the men and women who died in military service while fighting to defend the cause of freedom. We enjoy a lot of freedom in this country. We're free to attend church and worship. We're free to choose what we want to be when we grow up. We're free to choose where we want to live. In fact, we're free to choose most of the things that affect our daily lives. Yes, we enjoy our freedom, but that freedom wasn't free. Many courageous men and women gave their lives to pay the price for the freedom that you and I enjoy. These are the ones that we honor this weekend as we celebrate Memorial Day. Yes, we enjoy a lot of freedom, but the greatest freedom that we have is the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches that the penalty for sin is death. But you and I have been set free from this penalty. We've been set free because Jesus paid the penalty. The Bible tells us that Jesus died to set us free from the penalty of sin. Instead of death, we've been given eternal life. This freedom wasn't free. Jesus paid the price. In the New Testament, John in chapter 8, verse 36 says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This week, as we celebrate Memorial Day, let's remember to stop and thank God for those who have paid the price for our freedom. And let us also remember to thank God for Jesus, who has set us free from the penalty for sin, because he was willing to pay the price. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for the freedom that we enjoy. We are thankful for those who paid the price for that freedom. But even more important, we thank you for the freedom we have because Jesus was willing to pay the penalty for our sin. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Sandy. This morning, Russ Clanko is bringing us a solo call to worship, majesty, and glory. Oh, blessed man. 
asked her, Mother of salvation, I lift my hands and bless your name. Eternal is thy glory, eternal is thy power and might. You are the source of Oh, how beautiful. And the pictures, Maureen, just fits the song so perfectly. This is the time when we're going to pass the peace to each other. In a few weeks, we'll be able to do that face to face. Whether we touch or not, we'll be face to face. But for today, let's celebrate each other this weekend as we say the peace of God be with you. The peace of God be with you. The peace of God be with you. And one more time, the peace of God be with you. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is Psalm 104, verses 1 to 23. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You covered it with the watery depths as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains, but at your rebuke, the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took to flight. They flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys, to the place you assigned for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. He makes springs pour water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate bringing forth food from the earth. Wine that gladdens human hearts, oil to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests. The stork has its home in the junipers. The high mountains belong to the wild goats. 
The crags are a refuge for the hyrax. He made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to go down. You bring darkness, it becomes night, and all the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. Then people go out to their work, to their labor until evening. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is To Glory, To God Be the Glory. How manifold are your works? This Sunday, we are celebrating Memorial Day Sunday and also Peace with Justice Sunday. When you think about the Memorial Day, we confess that we enjoy our freedom because of the sacrifices of many people. And when you think about peace with justice, we also know that peace is owned and justice also is owned by the sacrifice of so many people. So on this day, we remember all the sacrifices that the men and women made during their service for our country. We usually remember those people who, followed, who have fallen. However, we also recognize those who are serving our country now 
in many different forms. Recognizing the sacrifices of others, that's the foundation of a meaningful life. Many people are pursuing happiness, but happiness comes only through the meaningful life. And we acknowledge the works of others and realize that we owe our lives to the network of lives. Somebody planted a seed, somebody watered it, and somebody made it grow before we taste the fruit. The Bible says, God is behind of all these activities. That's why we call it manifold activities. So we owe our lives to others. Last Sunday, you remember, all the graduates, they acknowledged the support of family, friends, and teachers. They are humble and they said that all I have achieved is not my own work. It's due to the sacrifices of our family and friends and teachers. We churches also recognize the works of the Holy Spirit in the mission and ministries for the last 2,000 years of history. We could not have done any of it without the grace of God and the works of the Holy Spirit. So we recognize them. Remember those who lived and died for us. Today, we give thanks to all those men and women who served our country with their tears, sweat, and blood. They, they were sons and daughters of our brothers and sisters. They had dreams and visions. Once they were young men and women, and they are now in different shapes and size. They gave up those personal dreams to protect our lives and our freedom. One of our church members, Simone Patton, you see the picture, how young she was, and now she is she looked different. You cannot even recognize the same person when you see her now, but she gave her life. She sacrificed all that she had to protect our lives and our freedom. She is now struggling with her physical conditions in VA hospital and rehab centers. She posts her progress in the Facebook, so I follow her progress and she sacrificed her youth, health, and dreams for us. This is just one illustration and one example and how many of others are still struggling in v VA hospitals and rehab centers. They remind us of the blood, sweat, and tears of Jesus. As a Christian, when I remember the blood of the fallen soldiers, I also remember the blood of Jesus on the cross. Sandy Blazer eloquently summarized it for the children's sermon in the children's language. And I really appreciate that. Because of their sacrifices, we enjoy our freedom from the threat of deadly forces. Because of his sacrifice, we enjoy our freedom from the power of sin and death. We owe our lives to them. We owe our eternal life to Jesus. All those soldiers, they sacrificed their lives following the orders of a commander in chief. That is the reason why when we have funeral services of, or the memorial services of the servicemen and women, the president of the United States of America presents our flag to the family members with deep appreciation of their sacrifices. When I go to the memorial service, that is one of the solemn moment and meaningful moment for me. When I watch the soldiers fold the flags and present it to the family members, that's the time when I actually shed my tears, sometimes visibly, sometimes not visibly. But same thing happened. Jesus obeyed to the will of God. Jesus died on the cross to obey to the will of God. Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. That is why God made Jesus as the king of kings and allowed him to stay at the right hand of God. It's like the president present the flag of our country to the family members 
even though we shed our blood, there will be reward also. And there are, as we see that there are orders behind what we see. When you see soldiers serving our country, we understand that there are invisible orders from the commander in chief that connect their duties and tasks. Everybody is doing their duties. However, they are all connected to protect our country. And when you see church mission and ministries, it's not just the individual mission and individual ministries. It is all connected. And we also understand that there are invisible orders of God that connect our works. We are all called by God and connected by God, form a church, universal church together, and we do this ministry together. The psalm shows us the invisible order of God in the universe. Oh Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on your waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. Can you see God in universe and can you express your faith in this way as the Psalm says? Can you see invisible order of God in the universe? If you can, you have a spiritual eyes. You are, you are awakened. So to do that, we have to meditate on God. Meditate on their sacrifices when we think about the fallen soldiers. We also have to meditate on the sacrifice that God made. Using your imagination, you can connect the dots. When you sit in front of a tombstone of a fallen soldier, imagine all the challenges that he or she faced. They still gave their lives because they loved our country. Let us give thanks to them. They can be a hero in one novel or music or drama or movie. We can imagine all the challenges that they have gone through. In the same way, when you sit in nature, if you go out to the field or barbecue party during the Memorial Day weekend, Feel the love of God and give thanks. God created the universe. Jesus saved all in it. And the Holy Spirit helps us to realize the network of Trinity. So go out and meditate on the sacrifice of our soldiers and sacrifice of our Lord. Remembering sacrifice of others, that's an act of worship. The psalmist says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleased to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Remembering the sacrifice of soldiers is an act of worship when we connect them to the sacrifice and love of God. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks to God in all circumstances. That's the will of God in Jesus Christ. May God protect our country and all of us. God is the ultimate protection for our country and us. If God does not protect us, thousands of military units cannot protect us. Even though with so many nuclear bombs, the Soviet Union is destroyed, I mean, it's dissembled. Military weapons cannot protect us. It is God who can protect us. On this Memorial Day, let us remember our heroes and heroines, as well as our Lord Jesus, who died on the cross for our eternal life and freedom. Let us reaffirm the love of God for all of us. May God bless you and enjoy the Memorial Day weekend with love and peace and justice with all the freedom that you have. Let us pray together. Thank you, God. We enjoy our freedom now because somebody sacrifices their lives. 
We know that it is our turn to contribute to the freedom that we enjoy. Help us to do your work in many different ways, using the unique talents that you have given to us. Bless all those who worship with us today, all over the world, and bless all the creation with your power and grace, so we all can celebrate your power and love together as one dot in the whole connection. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us how to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us in a litany of remembrance on this Memorial Day. Let us take this time for a moment of remembrance. We remember fallen soldiers and the sacrifice they made for the sake of others. Let us take this time for a moment of thanksgiving. We thank God for brave men and women that have given their lives so that we may worship without fear. And we give thanks for all those who are still fighting around the world and their families who live without them as they quest for peace and freedom. Let us take this time for a moment of silence. For a moment is the least we can do for those that gave their eternity. God of every nation, as we remember those that gave their lives for our sake, let us be stirred to action in their memory. We confess that we have not done all that is possible to promote peace and justice in our world. We have not loved our neighbors, let alone our enemies. Forgive us for failing to live up to your commandments. Empower us to work for your kingdom in this world and welcome us by your grace into your kingdom in the next. Amen.
What a beautiful celebration of this Memorial Day. And since it is Peace and Justice Sunday also, we present that as one of the mission and ministries of the Methodist Church. You can be a part of those mission and ministries. Your prayers, your service, your talents, all of those are what we need when we are the church in Christ's world. And you can give us gifts of your treasures. You can mail a check to Concord UMC, 1645 West Street, Concord, California, 94521. Or you can visit ConcordUMC.org and click on online giving for direct links. Or we always suggest online bill pay through your bank. You ask your bank for information and we know that every month we get a check from you that enables us to continue with the mission and ministries of Concord United Methodist Church. Thank you for your time, talent, treasures, and prayers. In our prayers this week, we want to keep in mind Ken and Jan Karpoff. They're traveling to Southern California to celebrate the birthday of their youngest granddaughter, Zoe, fourth birthday. We want to continue to pray as we have been for Tom Riley, who had a hip replacement, and Linda Jinks, also recovering from hip surgery. Tom is at home, and Linda will be coming home tomorrow night. Aldona has come home from the hospital. We're pleased to hear of that. And we want to continue our prayers for Eric Ferguson and his mother, Betty, who, as we know, have had some recent struggles, and we pray for both of them. Pastor Lee. Let us pray together. Thank you, God, for all the people who are willing to serve you in military units. Bless all the family members and the soldiers who are serving and help them to find the meaning in their services and sacrifices. Lord, we also pray for all those who are traveling this weekend. Many millions of people are traveling to meet their family members, and to appreciate your creation all over the country. Have all of us travel safely, especially Jen and Ken, who are going to Southern California to see the youngest grandchild, Zoe. Lord, we also pray for those who have to stay home, recovering from surgery, Linda Jinks, Tom Riley, Eldana, and Eric, and all those people who are still struggling to regain the full strength and recover their physical strength. Give them their spiritual strength and help them to find meaning in the struggles. Lord, we also pray for our brothers and sisters who are still struggling against the COVID-19 aftermath, financially and mentally and spiritually. Many people try to make terms of it and help all of us to find meaningful 
works to do for your kingdom. And Lord, thank you for the possibility and hope for reopening our churches all over the country. We will gather together in church buildings to praise you as we have done all over the places during this shelter in place times. And bless all those who faithfully have served you in many different ways. And bless our country with your peace and justice. And give us hope so we can share that hope with all the countries and peoples and nations in the world. We pray this all in the name of Jesus, our Prince of Peace, who taught us how to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Make me a channel of your peace Where there is hatred, let me bring your love Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord And where there's doubt, true faith in you Make me a channel of your peace Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope sadness ever joy. O oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. that we receive and in dying that we're born to eternal life now the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of our god and the power and communion of the holy spirit be with all the fallen soldiers and men and women who serve our country with the sacrifices and their families and with all of us ever and forever. Amen.